Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, February 25th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. While well, U.S. regulators are weighing today the safety of a new technology that aims to eradicate genetic disorders in children by combining the DNA of three people, not two. That's right. This new technology is going to have one father and two mothers, which some people say could lead to designer babies. Now, this procedure is basically going to take a healthy donor DNA and take out the, the material that will be from the mother, which would determine things like hair color and intelligence, and then splice that with the healthy mitochondria DNA from the donor's material. So this isn't the first time that scientists have attempted to disrupt the actions of mitochondria DNA to help fight disease. Nor is it the first time the FDA has considered the issue. From 1997 to 2003, about 30 children worldwide were born using a method that injected donor mitochondria DNA into eggs after they were fertilized. Now, the first baby born with this technique was reported in 1997. But in 2003, the FDA told fertility clinics that genetically manipulated embryos were considered a biological product and subject to regulation. So there's the catch. They're considered a biological product subject to regulation, much like we saw Monsanto patented their seeds. Are they going to patent these kids? I mean, are they going to be afforded the same rights as, as your average person? Because they're here, they're not considering them a real human. They're considering them a product. Where does it end? Now, before you think that scientists are going to start doing some weird stuff with these designer babies, think again. They've already begun working on this technology. We've already seen what scientists are willing to do when they play God. They've taken spider silk and injected it into goats and made these spider goats that give this bulletproof material. And they have no problem eradicating the honeybees with their genetically modified foods, we have human rabbit clones. Science, of course, has made major breakthroughs in drug research and transplant technology by experimenting on chimeras, which is a human-animal hybrid. And Jesse Ventura stormed the gates of the Yerkes Primate Research Facility uh, in Georgia to demand to know the truth on these human Zs, which he believes are already walking amongst us in a sort of Planet of the Apes esque scenario, but where does it end? And the fact is, if these children end up having other children, what's to say that there's not going to be some new sort of genetic disease that is the result of this? Mother Nature has a way of filling in the gaps. We've reported before on how the influenza vaccine, children getting the influ influenza vaccine are now coming down with stronger and more virulent forms of the flu. And then there's also the cases of uh, the pertussis vaccine. While it might have eradicated the pertussis strain, it is now creating a new form of Bordetella parapertussis, which is giving children whooping cough-like symptoms, but it's not actually the whooping cough, it's this whole new disease that's being created. So here, is this just mother nature sort of filling in the gaps with this technology that we don't even really know what the long-term effects are gonna be of messing with the human genome? Is this potentially the cause of the mysterious polio-like illness that's affected a number of children in California? 20 cases have been reported statewide since 2012 when doctors started seeing children with severe weakness or rapid paralysis in the arms or legs sometimes after a mild respiratory illness. Now, it never states anywhere in this article whether any of these children received a polio vaccine, so it's kind of curious that the doctor, Dr. Van Haren, who's a pediatric neurologist studying some of these cases, says that polio vaccines do not protect children from the disease, but he stressed that it's still very important for children to receive that vaccine. So that is something that is extremely curious, much like we have the flu vaccine, which is now mutating and causing new strains of the flu. Are we messing around with nature and science eradicating polio and creating a new form of polio that even though the number 20 doesn't seem very large, it's actually an alarming number to have this new thing and just in areas in California. 
So again, you know, you're messing with, with mother nature and there are going to be repercussions. But the frightening and really sad reality is that if any of these results from these case studies go against the vaccine industry, there's just too much money behind big pharma, too much power for us to probably get any truth about those results. David Knight has more on that. Remember when James Clapper was pointedly asked, does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. He can't even look Senator Wyden in the eye. And soon after, the Snowden documents proved that it was a blatant lie. But Clapper isn't the only bureaucrat to lie under oath in congressional testimony. Back in November 2012, the CDC said this. Vaccines and their components did not increase the risk for autism. But after 10 years and 100 FOIA requests, Dr. Brian Hooker has uncovered documentary evidence that the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, did, in fact, conduct studies on the link between autism and thimerosal, the preservative in vaccines that is 50% mercury by weight. Thimerosal was used in most childhood vaccines and the Rogam shot for pregnant women prior to the early 2000s. What Dr. Hooker found was that data on over 400,000 infants born between 1991 and 1997, which was analyzed by a CDC epidemiologist, proves unequivocally that in 2000, CDC officials were informed internally of the very high risk of autism, non-organic sleep disorder, and speech disorder associated with thimerosal exposure. In fact, a study on the very topic of thimerosal and autism was presented at a conference and therefore required the approval of top CDC officials prior to the presentation. The 1999 study was entitled Increased Risk of Developmental Neurologic Impairment after high exposure to thimerosal containing vaccines in the first month of life. Did the CDC cover up studies and data that linked thimerosal to autism in order to help big pharmaceutical companies? Dr. Hooker points out that the former director of the CDC, which purchases $4 billion worth of vaccines annually, is now the president of Merck's vaccine division. Until the uh, wonderful people like us introduce vaccinations to Africa, uh, the African children basically were autism free. They never heard of autism, never had a case of down. Are you familiar with that? Have you ever heard that before? Well, the revolt against the Western backed takeover of the Ukraine has intensified. Russian speaking Ukrainians in Crimea are resisting the Western banker takeover of their country by installing a Russian mayor in the town of Sevastopol as part of an emerging revolt against the U.S. backed coup d'etat that saw the overthrow of their democratically elected president. The Russian military has also moved in to secure the city against opposition militants. Now, meanwhile, in an effort to afford the coup some, some kind of legitimacy, the Ukrainian parliament voted in favor of trying Yanukovych before the International Criminal Court. And this was a development that came shortly after it was revealed that a secretive British investigators are combing central Kiev for any evidence that the government snipers were massacring demonstrators. Now, a report says that the investigators, who do not wish to be identified, say they have already pinpointed four sniper positions. So, in other words, the British Foreign Office has already deployed agents in Kiev to either manufacture or plant evidence, which will subsequently be used to demonize Yanukovych as a barbarian who ordered the massacre of protesters. Now, this is much like the situation that we saw with Syria where immediately after the chemical weapons incident there, the U.S. said that it was definitely the Assad regime, although we had evidence that showed that it probably more likely came from the Western-backed rebels. And then they deployed their agents in to go and collect all of this evidence to say, yes, of course, this happened. And now we're seeing it here with the opposition in the Ukraine, who is also Western-backed. So it's the same scenario. It's the repeat the lie over and over again, and people will believe it. But the thing that's the shame is that you have, both in Syria and in the Ukraine, you have these citizens, people that are fighting 
for freedom. They're fighting a grassroots revolution. They probably don't even realize that they have been co-opted. And here you have a situation where the people in the Ukraine are being put through an absolutely horrible incident. Either way you look at it, it's not going to be good for them. They are basically caught in the middle of this massive tug of war between the East and West. The Ukraine is now a battleground to fight this proxy war, and either way it ends up for the Ukrainians isn't going to be great. They're either going to be dominated by Russia or the EU and the U.S. So either scenario isn't really great from them, but uh, one thing is for certain that the ties between Russia and the U.S. are <laughs> their good standing, their friendly relations are over. After the U.S. failed to take out Russian ally in Syria, now they have helped to fuel this violent revolution right on Russia's borders. So, of course, that is certainly the end of the friendly ties between the U.S. and Russia. So we'll have to stay tuned on that, but we're definitely seeing that kind of ramping up the 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 propaganda there in that respect. But the question of how much the Ukrainian revolution was driven by external influences versus a real grassroots effort is now going to be put to the test, because some people in the Ukraine are demanding that the right to bear arms be included in their new constitution. So the Ukrainian Gun Owners Association has announced that it will start to work on the preparation of amendments to the constitution, which will provide an unconditional right for the Ukrainian citizens to bear arms. Their press release states, People should have the right to bear arms. Authorities should not and will not be stronger than its people. Armed people are treated with respect. Absolutely. Now, whether or not the Ukrainians are able to secure the right to bear arms remains to be seen because the EU puppet government that is sure to be set up there isn't likely to grant them this right based on Europe's very strict gun laws. But like I mentioned before, the situation that's happening there in the Ukraine is very important for Americans to witness because it it's just further proves the need for the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms. The exact way it was written is the way the Founding Fathers meant for it to be interpreted. Now stick around because we've got a lot more coming up. Globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency Potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. Info.